My name is Matthew Heinemann. I am the director of City of Ghosts. I had been doing a lot of research into ISIS and what was happening in Syria, uh, and then read an article about this group, Raqqa's Being Slaughtered Silently, uh, a group of friends who basically banded together to expose the atrocities that ISIS was committing in their hometown of Raqqa, which was at that point the capital of the Islamic State. Uh, and I was fascinated by the sort of uh, propaganda war, this war of information between ISIS on one hand and this group RBSS on the other, who is trying to um, show the horrors that are, that are being committed um, and all the human rights violations that are being committed. But the film became much more than that for me. It became a story of a brotherhood. It became an immigrant story as they're forced to flee as members of the group were uh, killed. Um, it became a story of rising nationalism in Europe. Um, and it also you know, became a story of trauma. And I think that's one of the things I love about making documentary films is that you, know, you often start out doing one thing and then it evolves into something much different. I think it's so important to keep your mind open to that possibility of change. What I've tried to do with my films um, is take issues that are so often relegated to headlines or to stats or to talking heads and to try to humanize them. You know, this issue of, of ISIS, this issue of Syria, as an American, that we try to keep at arm's length, um, you know, only when it affects us, only when something like Orlando happens, do people start talking about it, and then it just comes out of the headlines again. And, and you know, I think my, one of my goals with this film was to really put a human face to this conflict and to introduce you to characters um, that hopefully uh, make you care a little bit more, make you empathize a little bit more. Uh, first and foremost for this you know, amazingly heroic group who have risked their lives uh, to expose what ISIS is doing. Uh, for the people of their hometown of Raqqa who have lived in horrible conditions. Uh, and for the people of Syria who have been in this uh, proxy war, civil war, um, whatever you want to call it, for uh, since the revolution started, and over 500,000 people have been killed. And I think, you know, stats are numbing. And, and so I feel like my job and, and my goal, again, is to, through very personal, deeply personal stories, put a face to these topics. I try to find subjects and characters that are in some sort of, you know, juncture or, or, or critical point. Um, and the members of this group, Rock is Being Slaughtered Silently, were, at the time when I started filming them, uh, being forced to flee. Uh, a number of members of their group were killed by ISIS, family members were killed, and so I followed them as they were escaping, first to Turkey and then ultimately to Europe. And, you know, trust is, is everything. You know, I don't want to talk about this story in retrospect. I don't want to sit down once they settled somewhere and, and tell, you know, have me tell them their life story. I wanted to be with them. It was by far the hardest film that I've ever made and probably will ever make um, because you know, I was following this, this group that w was by nature not wanting to be <laughs> followed. You know, they're hiding out in safe houses. Um, logistically, it's very, very, very difficult. And then cinematically, a lot of the drama took place in smoky, you know, hotel rooms and safe houses with, with guys behind cell phones and computers and trying to find the cinema in that, trying to find the humanity in that, trying to find the drama in that, um, you know, was one of my biggest challenges. Um, but again, the, the key element of all of this is just a, a basic element of, of trust and respect. Um, and I think that's the sort of, uh, hopefully, why we make documentary films is to celebrate people to celebrate people who are doing extraordinary things. And even if I'm filming with people that I don't necessarily agree with what they're doing, the, by the act of sharing your story, the act of taking part in a documentary, um, you know, you, you have to always be deferential to your subjects and, and to the courage that they have in, in telling their story to a larger audience. When we first started filming, we had very candid conversations about the reality both the production process and ultimately when, when the film gets distributed, uh, the dangers that, that it would entail, the dangers it would entail of, of me 
meeting up with them in safe houses and filming with them, the dangers of, of communicating, even though we're communicating through encrypted means, and ultimately the dangers of what happens when the film comes out into the world, that by showing their faces, by coming out from behind the veneer of social media, um, they, in essence, are, are obviously greatly increasing their risk profile and putting their lives at further risk. And so these are conversations that we had before I started filming, throughout the production process, and then obviously after the film was done. But they wanted to tell the story. They wanted to show their faces. They wanted to show that they're moderate Muslim men fighting the perversion of their religion. And they're proud of that. And you know they received death threats. They, re they continue to receive death threats. Um, but you know they continue to persevere and, and, and do their work. I try to make films that matter to me on subjects that I care about, about people that I care about, about issues that I care about. I don't think you need to be an outsider or an insider. I don't think you know you have to have be part of a certain group or religion or race to take to make a film about um, a certain topic. And obviously, I'm a white male from America. Um, and so that gives me certain privileges. But I think at least what I tried to do um, is just be honest and be truthful and be empathetic, whether that's with cartel members in Mexico or you know, Syrian activists fighting against ISIS. I treat everyone with the same level of respect. And you know, I'm making a feature film now about a woman. I'm not a woman. Uh, that's not a secret. Uh, you know, do I have a right to tell that story? I think I do. You know, I'm a storyteller, and, and so um, I hope to continue to tell stories not about myself, because I find myself quite boring, um, about you know, people and, and topics that fascinate me. And I don't think uh, being an insider or an outsider or a certain age or a certain class, or, none of that matters. It's, it's, how you, uh, it's how you tell that story, how you connect with that story, how you connect with the people that are at the heart of that story um, that I think matters. I feel extremely fortunate to be able to you know, make my first narrative film that people believed in me to, to make this leap. I, I don't view it as a huge leap, to be honest. You know, it's, 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 it's storytelling. Um, just a different medium. Instead of being alone in a room, I'm a, with a room of 300 people. Again, it's the same, same thing at the heart of it, which is trust. Whether it's trust with my subjects, in City of Ghosts, or whether it's my trust with the actors that I worked with on A Private War. Um, I think that, that rapport, um, that transparency, that honesty, I, is something that I think helped me transition um, in, into the narrative space. Uh, at the same time, you know, it, it, it's a story about journalism. It's a story about war. Um, and I've had experiences with, with both of those things. And so it wasn't that big of a leap and honestly part of the reason why I was attracted to tell this story. Like City of Ghosts, um, my narrative film, A Private War, about a uh, female war correspondent, Marie Colvin, who was killed in Syria, um, you know, it's a bit of an homage to journalism. You know, in this, t in this age when, you know, facts seem to be malleable and journalism is under attack, I think it's so, so important to celebrate people who are fighting for the truth, who are seeking out the truth, um, and that's, I guess, another thing that ties both of these films together.